Hello, this is Simply Exploring and Adventuring with Lewis. As you can see, I have a new look. Um, yesterday was um, Veterans Day, so I was able to get a free haircut <laughs> at a uh, sports clip in Lancaster yesterday. So, But today, we're coming to you from York, Pennsylvania for Articles of Confederation Day here. So if you don't know, not only was York um, the capital of the United States for a, a little over a year, almost a year, I believe. Um, but the Articles of Confederation was signed right behind here, but this is not the original building. This is the replica of the, orig of the uh, original um, courthouse that once stood here. So, if you want to know what the articles entail, you can join me. So as you can see, this is an actual replica of it, and right here they have this tablet right here explaining about the old courthouse here, a little bit about the courthouse, uh, some of the events that happened here. In the old courthouse here at York, the, uh, the French alliance was ratified by the Continental Congress. May 4th, 1778, I believe. In the darkest period of the Revolutionary War, it brought hope and joy to General Washington and the Continental Army at Valley Forge. The aid thus secured made possible American independence throughout the Treaty of Paris of 1783. Then over here, there's another placard, and this one explains uh, Captain Michael Dowdle's company, or Doodle's company. Near the, this site, Captain Michael Doodle's company of York County riflemen mustered on July 24, 1775, prior to their 600-mile journey to join General George Washington at the Siege of Boston, Massachusetts. These frontier patriots were the first to answer the call to arms by the Continental Congress resolutions of June 14, 1775, authorizing the raising of 10 companies of riflemen. This was the beginning of what, what was to become, under the Constitution, the United States Army. The York Rifle Company has existed continuously from its establishment and is perpetuated in today's 131st Transportation Company, Pennsylvania Army National Guard. And it was, has a dedication here by the Honorable John Marsh Jr., Secretary of the Army, the Honorable William Goodling, United States Representative, Major General Sager, the Adjutant General, and the Honorable Rauhauser Jr., Chairman of the York County Bicentennial Commission and this hasn't officially begun yet so I think it said 10 o'clock but I read also 9 o'clock but I think they're getting ready for this stuff but as you can see uh, they're doing a Revolutionary War walking tour I'm sure it's in the building as well as around over maybe even at the what they call the Capitol Complex which is right across the street there And you can tour that, but I'm not sure if that's free today or not, but we'll find out. And then right here. And it explains more of what, they'll explain more as each we get to each stop, what the uh, articles meant. And it says, hint, hint, you got a friend in me. <laughs> that means that we were friends with... Uh, I guess at the time with France. 
And this article states that war is declared by countries, not by states. Article 9. And then we have the uh, reenactor already, already here. That's awesome. I'll see if I can get a picture of him shortly. And then right here is Article 8. States make all the money. <laughs> And then you'll be able, we'll be able to go inside the courthouse. Article 13. Every state shall abide by the determinations of the United States. In Congress assembled on all questions which by this confederation are submitted to them. And the articles of the confederation shall be inviolably observed by every state and the union shall be per perpetual nor shall any alteration at any time hereafter made in of them such uh, time thereafter made of them such alteration agree to in Congress of the United States and be afterwards confirmed by legislatures of every state Says, what's inside the colonial courthouse? Printing press demonstrations, copy of Article Confederation, Article of Confederation play at 2 p.m. And like I said, this is a reconstruction of the original 1754 colonial courthouse. Good morning. Good morning. They're going to have different activities. That's probably uh, Colonial Time toys, I believe. Yep, that's what they look like. So they're doing it on... Uh, oh! So there's Article 1. So we, they're in different order, it looks like. The style of this confederacy shall be the United States of America. So that's what I said. This one, this one was when it was formally... When it was formally um, recognized as a... The United States. So right here we're looking at before it becomes active. Colonial time toys. So they have the the ball and you gotta catch the ball in the cup and think you I believe you gotta catch the hoops with the sticks or you gotta toss them with the sticks and catch them with the sticks. I've seen this demonstration before and then there's the stick with the hoop that the kids would run around with. And then over here is Article 4. The people of each state shall have free ingress and regress to and from any other state. The people of each state shall have free ingress and regress to and from any other state. Why do they have it twice? Oh, the people, yeah, it says it twice. That's interesting. That's interesting that it says it twice, so there's possibly a reason. So... We are going back to the front and see if maybe I can get a, a picture of this gentleman that's dressed in period clothing. Ah, yes, at 10.30 this morning, the gentleman that's um, playing the role of Colonel Washington at that time. He wasn't general yet. This is er, er, uh, in early Revolutionary War. Like you go to Galinka, 
Hello. <laughs> There's the printing press <laughs> demonstration. Uh, <laughs> You're drastic. Yeah. yeah, we would have been that drastic. I would say that's not that drastic, but that's not true. So I've learned how much the North was involved in the entire oh, of the trade. Oh my goodness. And, and, and yeah. see, that's what it's that's cost. that's what's getting me uh, that's what makes me a little bit mad about this whole thing So I believe also the the colonial complex is open today. I'm, I believe it's all. I'm not sure if, if we have to pay for it tonight or today, or if it's going to be free for the Articles of Confederation Day. So. So I'm going to find out more information shortly. So this, every, any other time, this place is pretty much closed, so we're gonna get a look around at the, mm -hmm. at the courthouse itself now. Give you an idea of what it would have been like in 1754 when it was originally built. Like I said, this is a reconstruction of the, 1970s reconstruction of the actual courthouse as it would have looked back then. And I believe that's a copy of the article. This is part of the York County History Center as well. That's what I was trying to say. The articles, I believe, were a precursor to the Declaration of Independence, which is, they, they have a copy hanging up there as well, but we're not allowed to go. So as you can see, the representatives from each of the states would have sat around at the, each of these tables. North Carolina, I don't know if North Carolina and Pennsylvania had their own, <laughs> but several of them probably were shared. And I'm sure they'll they'll put out the uh, the name plates. <laughs> I guess when they do, they were conducting official business here. They would have had people, a few people up up ahead and up on the top, and they conducted the whole the whole meetings while they were going on here. But we'll get more information about about it. General uh, John Burgoyne, a picture of uh, John Burgoyne, and General Horatio Gates, who actually had a the um, the tavern across the street. He lived at the, what was it used to be a tavern. So they're going to be doing a demonstration. Modern, actually, a modern. You can see it's a modern interpretation of, of what the printing press would have been back then. And right here, there's a. Whoops. Oh, it's a little bit of glare here, so hopefully I can get a better shot. Oh, nope, still there. I'm going to have to stand in front of it a little bit to get rid of the glare. So there's a. A representation of the actual printing press. 
And there's some documents. I don't know if these are the actual articles right here, too. Could be, but I'm not sure. Maybe they'll, they'll let us know when this begins. See, this is a 13 starred flag for the original 13 colonies. And then here's. So, yeah, yeah, I'll be, I'll be helping in a minute, too. Go ahead. Thank you. Here's the plaque commemorating the uh, adoption of the first constitution, which is the Articles of the Confederation. Here. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's what I wanted to see. Yeah. Ow. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, it's that one, okay. <laughs> awesome. So, oh, okay. Uh, sort of like a copy over there, but this is the, ori the original, the real deal. Shine from the light above. So, so there's the real deal, and then there's a photocopy of it. Better, so you can see it. Okay. We have several fags over here available. Oh, she moved the chair. There was there. Good. Now we can get a better shot. Declaration of Independence. Again, now we get a close up of it. I got a copy at home of it. <laughs> a facsimile. Well, so I believe that's the original Columbus right there. What it would have looked like. Yep, the original Colonial Coal House right there. These are the, the picture of it. The original colonial courthouse was constructed in 1756 for 504,000 pounds. And I forget what the S stands for. 16 shillings. 504 pounds and 16 shillings. This structure was 45 by 45 feet and served as the first courthouse west of Susquehanna. It was central to the administration of this new frontier county. Population 37,535. The United States Congress met there from 1778 to 78, where they drafted the Articles of Confederation. The original courthouse was expanded in 1815, adding a clock. The renovated courthouse served a, a smaller population of 31,958 due to the creation of Adams County from York's territory. In 1841, the colonial courthouse was demolished when the second courthouse was built at a cost of $100,000. This served as a population of 47,010. The Confederate flag flew over th this courthouse when General Jubal Early occupied the city of Ro in June 1863 during the Civil War. In 1898, the second, courthouse, the second courthouse was demolished and the third courthouse was constructed to serve U.S. population, 99,489. This structure reused the Greek style pillars from the second courthouse. It was described by historian George Prowell as one of the most ornamental temples of justice in the state of Pennsylvania, costing 450000 In 1956, the third courthouse was enlarged when York's population reached 202000 at a cost of $1,500,000. One, one this courthouse was actively used by the county until 2004 when the Judicial Center was built. This fourth 
courthouse serves York's population, 446,078, alongside the third, now used for civil administration. Sorry if I stumbled in a couple spots there. <laughs> I'm not used to so, so much narration, so hopefully... How are you doing? All right. So they're starting to set up. Some things here on the outside, and as you can see, the there are people dressed in character, and there's the gentleman that's gonna play the role of General uh, Colonel Washington. He wasn't general yet, so. And as you can see, he's wearing more the clothes that would have been worn by the crown more than. The because we weren't a nation yet, not until officially it happened here. Wow. Oh, no problem. Yes, sir. Um, wow. So, how did you come to do this? Oh, uh, I got Edward Ned Hector, American, African American Revolutionary War Hero, as represented by Noah Lewis, which I think is this gentleman right here. That is neat right here to see living history, basically. Facts about Edward Ned Hector, a free black man who served as a teamster and artilleryman. All right, hoo-hah. I was an artilleryman originally when I was in the service. Yeah, so. Fought at Brandywine in Germantown at the age of 33. He was quoted as saying, the enemy shall not have my team. I will save the horses or perish myself. He was noted for his courage when during the retreat from Brandywine and contrary to orders, he refused to let his team, wagon, gunpowder and dropped armaments fall into enemy hands. After applying three times to Congress for his pension, he received a token payment of $40 the year before he died, he 
lived in a cabin in Conshohocken and was buried in the area. His wife Jude died on the way home from the burial. Hector Street in Conshohocken, PA was named after him in 1850. Charles, Ned's son, would marry Leah Fisher. She would live to be 106 years old. At the age of 100, she would still be chopping wood, sewing quilts, and fuzzing at the girls, or fussing at the girls of her time for chasing after immature boys for husbands. She, she would die in 1887 in the poorhouse after a man entrusted to sell her property ran off with the money. Man, the injustices that occur. Wow. Neat. So, right there is also Hec Ned Hector, uh, Edward Hector's obituary as well. I'm trying to do the best because it's they don't have it strapped up enough to, to see it. So I hope it does it justice. <laughs> wow. Um, I wish I could tell you that. How you they, you. He chose me. <laughs> I, I, I understand. He chose me. Yeah, I was, um, I was actually out in Seattle. I grew up in the Oh wow, a few recognizable names, Chris, Chris Addicts among them. We have a Crispus Attic Center over there in Lancaster. So he was, as it says, a social activist, abolitionist, I believe, as well. Spies, soldiers, and sailors, black colonials, abolitionists. Let me see. Defiant citizens, leaders of slave revolts. So there's so much information here, I'm just going to take a picture of it. Hopefully you can read the small print. Amazing. Benjamin Benneker was another one. James Armistead Lafayette. Prince Hall. So it shows you what they what they were, how important they were in their revolutionary times. So I'm looking forward to hear the uh, the um, speech by the guy reenacting Colonel Washington. Uh, and this is being sponsored by the York County History Center, which, as you can see, they're still kind of setting up their stations and stuff.
So, hey buddy, how you doing? Okay. I'm about to kind of talk, just have a chat with this gentleman that's representing yeah, Chris, uh, Chris, a revolutionary. A, a what? Okay. I don't belong to any unit. They would be very specific. But I'm trying to encapsulate everything you would wear: gaiters, uh, rock coat, a gorget. That's what I wanted to know. What that's called? Gorget. And that's that's a vestige of armor. Okay. Yeah. I see it. It's like a coat of arms. Yes. Yeah. Tricorn hat, a wig. Yep. Uh, knee breeches, buckle shoes. So this is all you would wear without guns. I didn't bring guns because I brought this stuff to wear. Life is good. Kind of didn't need it today. Yeah, and no need because then I can't fire them. And yeah. Somebody might take it. Yeah, and someone yeah. might be offended. So I just said, you know what? I'll, I'll leave. Didn't look at it that way. Right, right, <laughs> People right. get offended. Oh, he's got an arm. Got weapon. Yeah, yeah, weapon. Then I start something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I tried to wear this outfit so people said, oh, you know, so just come talk, talk, talk to us about SAR. So okay. That, that's why I'm this. Awesome. So he's representing the sons of the revolution. And of course, they're, the more known is the yes, they daughters. They're more well known. The more well known. Uh, so of course, they'd be partnering side yes, by side. Absolutely. And we work with these DRR ladies very closely. Okay. Yeah, so, so yeah. There's the town crier. Town crier. Oh, Senator Walton reporting for duty, <laughs> sir. <laughs> so you got your bill today. I do, yes. <laughs> We're ready to go here. All righty. <laughs> so he's the town crier. Oh, the town crier, crier yep. He would ring the bell when they needed. <laughs> yep. Hear ye, hear ye. Come on down. down. <laughs> I'll be making trips up to the... The market, central market, to get people down here. Oh, okay. That's the that's the whole idea. Cool. So. Hey. And I said it before he did. But <laughs> get him into the spirit of things. We're gonna have to work it out in the future where we get a Oh, oh, I've been having seen it. So you're allowed to take, I guess they have some sort of information here and pens and flags. Over here they have some stuff from the DAR here as well. A lot of the times these women were responsible for a lot of these monuments they raised the money for a lot of these monuments that we know about you know, to commemorate you know events in history this, uh, so the, these ladies are from the Episcopal uh, Church of St. John the Baptist. <laughs> it's celebrated. It, it's, it's, oh wow, it's over 250. So it's like 261. Oh, there goes that one. <laughs> We got folks dressed in revolutionary attire. And it has officially begun. It, it started at 10 o'clock. So there's the sound crier ringing the bell. He said he's going to be going around Market Street and um, he's going to be attracting 
people to come down to, for this event today. It, it was on Facebook. That's how I found out about it on, you know, Facebook events. So, um, yeah, so I, I think I found out about it about either a week ago or two weeks ago. And I said I marked it on my calendar. I'm definitely coming down, coming over. One county over from Lancaster to to York. It's only a thirty. Well, it was less than thirty minute drive today. So. so I'm looking forward to hearing Colonel Washington <laughs> give his spiel speech whatever he's doing talk about I guess maybe his time when he was in the Continental Army and that's the building right here right across from the colonial complex is where you purchase the tickets for to do the uh, museum tours which I'm probably going to try to do after some of these events um, once the major major stuff is over I'll try to hit some of the other other if not I may come another day um, and do it on its on its own because I, I need to probably dedicate a probably nearly a full day for museums here <laughs> But at least if I can get most of this here. This event is going on from 10 a.m. to, I think, 3 p.m. makes sense. So. And I'm just panning around the light. Right now there's not a lot going on yet until, you know, they start doing the actual walking tour at 11, I believe. They start doing the walking tour. kind of waiting for 30 minutes for the next 30 minutes to listen to this gentleman speak meet and listen Colonel Washington so apparently I went and got information over there at the at the office for the tours they are not free today this is the only event that's actually, um, since it's hosted by the York County, I believe, Historical Society, owns this, I believe, this old courthouse, the old courthouse here now. Um, so they're putting on as well as they run the uh, Colonial Complex as well. There's so much history here in York that both Colonial and Civil War history as well because uh, Jubal Early as you read early, <laughs> earlier came and took over the town as well as nearby Hanover so. printing. 
Now they used, see what he's holding there, they were called ink balls. He had two of them. One he would dip in the ink, he would take the second one and they would roll them together to spread the ink out. We're, we're kind of fudging it today, we're using it, it's called a brayer. Yeah. And I can do the same thing, I gotta work on the ink, spread it out, and get it ready to use. Now on an ink ball, I have to just stand here and I actually pound the top of the ink. This one I'm spreading the ink with a brayer. Now it's a very sloppy because there's ink on the place. So we're covering the paper with this with this cover here called the frisket to prevent the ink from getting on the paper where you don't want it. Close it up, push it under, around here. Now turn this this way. Okay, yeah, put it around and keep going. That's good. Now go back the other way. The original presses were wine presses. So they had this screw on it that they used to squeeze the grapes to get the juice out. So we used a wine press, we were printing on it, that's why it's called a printing press. Eventually they got that lever on there that the gentleman was pulling. pulling. Now, in the 1700s, we were using handmade paper. Handmade paper is very hard. As a printer, the day before I wanted to print, I would have to take every sheet of paper and wipe them with a damn cloth. Yeah. and stack them up so overnight they would get soft from the water. So I had wet paper, I had wet ink. So if you see what the third person did, hung the paper up around the shop to dry. But it was so wet. And then when it was dry, I could print the other side. I was going to print it, but I had to do it all over again. Did you get your copy? Thank Good. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Are you guys on North Queen Street there? Yes. Yep. I'm right next to the Locks place. Yes. Can we do a, get you doing it? Yeah, I'm gonna. Yep. Can you please? Oh, I'll just gonna hold it. Plenty of room. Plenty of room. Good. Um, okay. There you go. Take it off and hang it up for ceiling. <laughs> I know they did like a print, um, what was it, like a, a print festival a few years ago? We do. We do you it every did, year. You did do it, right? They, yes. Did That's they us. have it? Yes, we did have they it. have it this year? Yes, we've had it last year. We didn't have it yep. the year before. Last yeah. year we had it, and this year we have it. Because I went for, to, to that one it's like okay, two now, years ago. We've changed locations. Oh. We're on the campus at Thaddeus Stevens College of Technology. Oh, that's why I couldn't find it. Yes. I thought it was going to be downtown there on Lemon. It was going to cost us $3,000 to have it downtown. Oh, my gosh. Ouch. Ouch. And you're right there. Yes. That's the worst part. You're right outside, out, right, right there on Queen Street. So. Plus it's $500 to have it for Thaddeus Oh, that's not bad, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So when are you guys having it next year? Next year, September 16th. Okay, September. Right? I'll tell you what, you have to fill out one of these papers and you get it on our, mailing, our email list. And yes. Get information about it. Third person took that paper and hung it up to dry. Oh, man. Wait. I got something we could throw at them. Yeah, that, that was cool. We've got one with Jake in it. Oh, really? Oh, that was Bedford at, uh, Village. Yeah. At where? Old Bedford. Oh, Bedford, yeah. She was, she I want to go there, too. It's that not nice. Yeah. So, next weekend, the 19th.
is uh, the thing up the at remembrance the parade. yes. Oh, it's a parade. Yeah, it's a parade, but it's cool. You see a lot of uh, civil war stuff. Yeah. Then you got one on white horse. No, I don't. I Not got that it on a newer I think the next one was, was supposed to be at one. And they were only doing two walking tours today. But I don't know. It's like 45 minutes long. Uh, he'd probably like to meet Jim. Our buddy Jim. Oh, please race. tell me I didn't lose it again. Did oh. you lose it again? <laughs> tell me I didn't. putting it in one of your pockets? You just have a pocket full of them? <laughs> no. I probably dropped it over there now. Oh, yeah, probably what you got. Locked up. Locked up. Nope, I don't see it again. Bob, I need to get home. Did I put it? I thought I had put it in here, but I didn't. I don't know what I did with it now. But I had it from here to there. I didn't go that far. I didn't check. I don't think so. Nope. It's not in my pocket. There it is on the floor. I see it now. Excuse me. Can I reach that card really yes. quick? You know, I dropped it somewhere close by. Yeah, that's neat too. Yeah. With the original 13 colonies. I forgot to press the talk button. So there's a replica of a flagpole from back then. <laughs> and they just put this this new this sign is new because when I, when I was here last year visiting, this plaque wasn't here. Revolutionary War Patriots. This marker commemorates the men and women who achieved American independence. These patriots believed in the noble cause of liberty, fought valiantly to found the new nation, 1775 to 1783. Colonel James Smith, Yorktown Chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution. So right here there's implements for games. These are colonial games kids would have played with during those times. That's what they call a Jacob's Ladder. And then classic ball and cup. Hey guys, it's peeing over there. Really? Yeah. He's peeing off into the river. Yeah. And there's two women and a, a woman and a kid passing by. Okay. 
Sorry. So I know this game you, you had to toss the hoop and catch it with yeah. the stick. Really and then the ball and cup. It's just, it's just the way the work. Well, that one's totally different. But. And then there's the, the hoop. Mm. Pushing the hoop. I forgot what it's called. So there's, there's Jake again. Again, subscribe to Mr. Smithset's channel as well as Becky's, which is a, uh, Adventures with Dex. <laughs> You're probably going to try to wait for the tour. If not, then... Uh, First, okay. So we have another revolutionary soldier here standing with his weapon. Thank you very much. <laughs> so there was there was supposed to be a, a walking tour. I don't know when it's going to occur, but here's the. Uh, Oh, they're doing the, the reading time right now, so. So, I'm not sure where exactly. Oh, they're having a scavenger hunt for the, for the kids. So they have a paper. They have to go to each and every station here as well. So there are, I think they're having another one at 1 p.m. I'm kind of waiting for my buddy Jake from Hanover to show up too. I told him I'll be here till 3 p.m. so when the event's over so so these young men are from the fife and drum so we'll see them eventually uh, later sometime. She's doing, right now they're doing currently reading time, I believe, according to the square schedule. Oh, sorry for the, for the um, shakiness on the camera here. So this is part of the schedule, the itinerary for today. Um, we just saw... George Washington, which I will be posting as a separate video, as well as uh, Ned Hector, Edward Ned Hector, I'll be posting also as a separate individual video. And I didn't see that he had posted the, the two banners back here. I got the pictures of the other banners of the Battle of Brandywine, which he was a part of, I believe. And he had mentioned uh, Armistead as well. So this is an Kind of neat, very neat event right here in local history here. Most people don't understand. Um, so there's going to be a a walking tour shortly. I think at 1 p.m. I missed the 11 one, the 11 o'clock one because I was intently listening to young George Washington giving him giving his personal insights. 
to uh, as to you know his early military career as well. So, so actually, it's weird they're having the kids. The, the lady was reading the kids' story time, but they're supposed to be having the the uh, Central York Fife and Drums performance soon. Then the Chesapeake Independent Blues firing demonstration. Then it's supposed to be at, well, I'll give you the order. It started at 10 already, so I don't know what the actual time is. Give me a minute, I'll find out. Uh, well, these are all flint locks. That's the only mechanism that's available. Percussion's not coming until years later. Pistol. Pistols are pretty much used by bounded troops. Uh, the reason why they're pretty ungainy, typically. Uh, they're large, heavy. Uh, so they're going to be carrying the holsters on a horse on that. Um, even officers on foot, the infantry officers are not going to typically carry them. There are some exceptions. There are Scottish pistols that had a belt loop that some British officers carried on them. They were personal sidearms. Uh, more typically, for at least the American Continentals, they're using their sword or they're using a, you know, a spontoon uh, for defense. Some would carry a, a, a musket call a fusel. It's basically a cut down version of this. But they were discouraged from that. Washington didn't like to see his officers carrying weapons. Why do you think that is? What's that? Well, if you're going to use a weapon, right, you have to pay attention to it, you have to load and fire it, right? You got to spend some time doing that, right? If you're an officer, you're spending your time worrying about loading and firing your weapon, you have a misfire, you got to clear it. What are you not doing? You're not paying attention to all the troops under your command, right? Which is more important, you as an individual firing a weapon or a hundred men down here firing a weapon? A hundred men, right? This, they're, they're the ones that are going to keep you alive. You firing your individual is probably not going to do much good. <laughs> so the preference is for the officer to be working with the men working with the in the field maneuvers, that's their role, not firing weapons. So, yep, but good question. You know, mm -hmm. that's sort of a controversial uh, aspect that you see difference, you know, people doing different things, but but typically, yes, you're not gonna carry a fire. All right, any additional questions? Well, great, well, thank you all for coming today, uh, participating with some great questions as well. All right, so we'll be giving another demo in about, uh, about our, less than an hour now. So feel free to come back. And uh, you have a terrific day here in York. So thank you so thank much. You very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Cloud Tavern and the uh, residents of Horatio Gates. Uh, General Gates stood deer, and there was the, there's the Golden Plow right over there, as seen by the sign up there.
<laughs> Somebody put a flag. And this is... Statue of General Gates. And somebody put a flag right on it. And holding a cup or a glass. So now we're on Market in North Pershing. Like I said, I've done already. Uh, Video. I had done a video of this before, but I lost the footage, so I'm kind of redoing it again. And then this is now the colonial complex right here. You have to pay for the tour to get go inside the buildings, and they give you a tour, interior tour of the buildings, as well as several other locations too. Well, two. I think it's two or three other locations that you pay the money for. There's the garden right here. So I'm going to get a picture of the colonial complex right here. And this gentleman is just teaching about the the rifle. It's not an air. I think the other thing is, is, is to realize that you know, one of Britain's misperceptions is that everyone had a firearm. And that is completely out of the case. Firearms are owned, are owned by the wealthy. Those people can't afford it. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. You wouldn't have it. And there's no big game here. All the game is gone. It's been gone for years. So why would you have a firearm? Uh, there's a, a, a case that was uh, a, a, an account That's here in York. Made so yes, yeah, they pig is that. So. Uh, but there's an account here in York that there's a mountain lion that shows up in the community outside uh, down here. And it's chased up in a tree. Uh, and they're trying to figure out how to get this mountain lion out of the tree. Well, nobody has a weapon. They can't shoot it out. And so they have to go. They have to go send somebody to York to find somebody who has a weapon to come out to shoot the mountain. Lion. But but that gives you an idea of how limited use this was. And so it wasn't like everyone was a great frontiersman. No, they're not. Uh, and they don't know how to use these. You have to train them how to use. You have to issue one to them. Uh, so it's not like today where you know, oh, we're going to raise militia and everybody's got firearms. No, no that's not the case. Even. Uh, National Rifle Association. When I, I was a little boy and I learned how to shoot with an NRI class. Mm -hmm. Well, they um, were formed after the Civil War by General Wingate and other guys who trained Americans in marksmanship because most Americans <laughs> weren't very good at it and they wanted to train people to serve the National Guard. They even, and you know, he complains in his introduction to his first book that all the instructional manuals were coming from Europe. The, the target practice uh, textbook of the United States Army in the Civil War was a translation from the French. Bernand sharpshooters and crack sharpshooters, their first company, Company A, was entirely made up of Swiss immigrants because <laughs> they knew how to shoot. So, yeah, it was a different situation. It's only after the Civil War when the United States government is trying to get rid of about two million firearms and you have all these um, manufacturers of carbines and pistols that, that want to keep a market. That's when you really see an expansion. And the westward, westward expansion that as well, self-protection. Um, but, you know, at our in our period, it's not a, a common item. That's no. a lot of information I wouldn't have known. Yeah, well, well yeah. It's, uh, so it's, you know, it's the like Second the, Amendment was written in that context. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's really American myth, you know, all that. And also that we were all fighting behind rocks and trees. And it's like, you know, the American, the American Cuddle Army won the battlefield using European attack, which was taught to them by a Prussian uh, drill master, you know, von Steuben, using Prussian, Prussian tactics. Okay. So, yeah, it's, 
Nothing American about it. <laughs> really, that's Thank the, God for the French. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> well, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Well, thanks for coming by. You have a great rest of the afternoon.